first used for a LASIK flap in 1999 in Budapest with a 2 kHz engine, femtosecond lasers started a true revolution in refractive surgery. However, drawbacks such as opaque bubble layer formation during flap making and post-LASIK inflammation were reported and related to the high energy of the laser delivered to the cornea. There is an inverse relationship between the laser pulse duration and the energy required for achieving the ionization threshold and optical breakdown. In addition, a higher numerical aperture optimizes spot size and increases depth accuracy, allowing for corneal cutting procedures with unprecedented precision. The concept of creating a stromal lenticule to be removed in a single piece, eliminating the need for laser photoablation, was first proposed in 1996, but failed due to limitations of the available laser technology. The Visumax from Carl Zeiss Meditech is a 500 kHz femtosecond laser that uses a concave glass interface with limbal suction. The docking process uses a curved interface, which causes less corneal distortion. Limbal suction minimizes intraocular pressure rise compared to classic docking with flat applanation and conjunctival scleral suction. The Visumax has a low energy profile with advanced optics that provides the three-dimensional geometric precision needed for femto-assisted lenticular extraction. Pioneering work by Rupal Shaw and Walter Secundo initially involved making a flap to be lifted, exposing the underlying lenticule for removal. Improvements in the laser scanning and energy settings have allowed extraction of the refractive lenticule without lifting the flap through a progressively smaller incision so that keyhole or small incision lenticular extraction was developed, or SMILE. During SMILE, there is a minimal to no discomfort for the patient. After the speculum is placed, the patient is asked to fixate on the green light that is focused according to his refraction. The calibrated, curved glass uniformly contacts the cornea when suction is started, raising the IOP to 70 to 80 millimeters of mercury, which is low enough to allow the patient to maintain vision. A combination of the surgeon's coaxial view and the patient's fixation results in optimal centration on the visual axis, which is verified using an infrared illumination system. The laser dissection starts under the lenticule, followed by a side cut that determines minimal lenticular thickness, then the plane over the lenticule, forming the cap, and finally one or two small incisions are created. Cap and lenticule parameters, along with the size and number of incisions, are programmed in the laser. The total suction time is less than 35 seconds, and the total energy is 0.58 joules. These do not vary according to the refractive treatment because the laser always uses the same incision parameters but simply places them farther apart for higher corrections. Smile may be challenging for the beginning surgeons, but usually has a fast and smooth learning curve with proper guidance. We prefer to hold the eye steady for better control using a 0.12 forceps. After opening the small entry incision, both upper and lower interfaces are identified with a blunt hook. The upper interface of the lenticule is separated first, using a standard lamellar dissection technique of waving a blunt spatula back and forth through the entire cap. The already identified lower interface is entered without difficulty and dissected in a similar fashion. Leaving a small area opposite to the incision until the end facilitates the lenticule mobilization and removal, which can also be performed using a forceps. If the lower interface is dissected first, the separation of the lenticule from the cap may be tough, but it is straightforwardly accomplished by an inverted Sinsky hook that pulls the edge of the lenticule, separating it from the cap. An upward maneuver with the hook may be used to fold the lenticule, opening space to allow the spatula to enter the upper interface to complete the separation. The second two millimeter incision may be needed as an extra entry route to get into the bottom of the lenticule in some cases. There are an increasing number of publications that report excellent refractive efficiency, safety, and stability using the SMILE technique. At six months, over 80% of cases are within half a diopter and over 95% within one diopter from the intended correction. A lower percentage of complications is reported as seen in a Jortal study involving over 1,800 eyes. Reinstein reported 92% of SMILE cases have an uncorrected acuity of 2025 or better in the first day after surgery, in contrast to 98% of LASIK cases. The slightly slower visual rehabilitation is related to the surgical manipulation, which is continuously improving due to refinements on surgical instrumentation and techniques. The advantages of SMILE go far beyond the elimination of flap dislocation. In contrast to stromal photoablation, 
there is no influence of stromal hydration and room conditions, which may explain the improved accuracy for the correction of high myopia as reported by Ibrahim. Corneal wound healing studies using the rabbit model described by Wilson demonstrated differences and potential advantages of femtosecond lenticule extraction over femtosecond LASIK. A study from Singapore demonstrated that FLEX had less inflammation and extracellular matrix deposition than femtolasic at one day. Such differences became more marked as the power of correction was increased. In addition, a Chinese study found SMILE to induce less keratocyte apoptosis, proliferation, and inflammatory infiltrate than femtolasic. The corneal nerve bundles at the anterior stroma are less altered by the lenticule removal than by the flap plus laser ablation. A Cochet-Bonnet esthesiometer study by Reinstein documented the mild reduction of corneal sensation after SMILE, which is much less pronounced than the hypoesthesia that follows LASIK. This explains why there is apparently less neurotrophic epitheliopathy and dry eye scores after SMILE. The small incision preserves more lamellae within the anterior stroma, which is stronger than the mid and posterior stroma, as demonstrated by Brewan optical microscopy studies. Concurrently, Dawson and Randleman measured the cohesive tensile strength of the cornea at different stromal depths. These data served as the basis for a mathematical model that demonstrated the residual tensile strength after LASIK, which depends solely on the residual stromal bed, would be on average 28% lower than it would be after a SMILE procedure, which also considers the cap. The lower impact on corneal biomechanics, also predicted in finite element studies, does explain, according to the model described by Sinha Roy, Dupes, and Roberts, why there is less induction of spherical aberration after SMILE. The extracted refractive lenticule can be used for transplant procedures. While storage techniques and legislation need to be adjusted, this was already demonstrated by Nunes and Kanesh in ectatic corneas and by Pradhan for the correction of high hyperopia in a Baracare keratophagia. SMILE has become increasingly popular with over 120,000 procedures successfully performed worldwide to treat myopic astigmatism. It is a relatively new procedure and is still evolving. While its current state already provides some advantages, expected developments include hyperopic treatments, customization of lenticular profiles, and better alignment strategies for astigmatic correction. We predict SMILE will be the major refractive procedure in the near future. Thank you for your attention.